like 200 people arrested. So you just tell about yeah. the efficacy of that and the impact. Well, you've been at the center of it for a long time. <laughs> yeah. Talk about it. Yeah, so um, we, I went back and counted to make sure I knew. We had uh, 34 actions in which there were arrests on 32 different days. Uh, we, we clock 198 arrests in there. We could, we could fudge around the edges about for people who took solidi solidarity actions elsewhere and get ourselves over 200, but I think that's unnecessary. Uh, we counted uh, five different Saturdays on which we proclaimed publicly that we were gonna show up with enough people to shut down construction for all day, on which the company didn't work. They, they did construction Monday through Saturday. And, so, and um, we know that they went home early for the winter uh, in the fall of, of 2015 because they were pretty tired of us. And so in that way, we cost them almost three weeks of work just, just in that moment. And so um, people came back day after day after day and week after week. And the thing that, that isn't really represented in this trial because it was, it was a lawful act was that um, led by Mary Boyle, who's here and we should hear from. Yeah. Um, so, so led by Mary Boyle and Bill Kessler, um, John, who had to who had to go to a meeting, but um, but folks in the neighborhood and some of their closest supporters held a vigil every morning of construction from eight to nine a.m. This pipeline was being built almost a hundred percent. 100% of the part of it that was in Boston was being built in the city streets. And so they stood outside from 8 to 9 a.m. every morning of construction during drive time, holding signs, holding vigil, so that people couldn't just drive by and allow the violence that was happening right under their noses to, to go unseen. And, um, and it was that kind of sustained effort, combined then with sustained efforts to bring people out to march and to protest, to get people in the pipeline trench and to get other people to stand on the sidewalk and cheer for them that we felt like was the kind of sustained campaign that, that we would like to see more of. We know we're not the only people who've ever had a sustained campaign of resistance, um, but we felt very clear that it was, it was important for us to do it here. And in terms of the necessity defense, maybe Tim could talk about why we felt like it was important to show that we had a sustained campaign for the necessity defense. Well, for part of the necessity defense, we have to argue a reasonable expectation that we could actually avert the harms, you know, and, and in the real world of, of fighting these projects, just one civil disobedience action or just one person acting um, isn't reasonably going to stop these projects by, by huge corporations. But, but when communities come together to resist and movements stand up to resist over and over and over, week after week, day after day, uh, with wave after wave of action, that shows a, a reasonable chance. That's how movements actually win. And, and, it's, and it's having an impact beyond just this case. You know, while, while the West Roxbury resistance was going on, Kinder Morgan, another pipeline com company, canceled their pipeline project on the other side of the state yeah. when they were watching whoa, what was happening whoa. over here. And, and now for the past six months, we've heard one report after another of pipeline companies, natural gas companies, reporting to their shareholders, reporting to their trade groups, their industry groups, that, that they can't do any fossil fuel infrastructure projects, they can't do any natural gas projects anywhere in the country without meeting sustained resistance. That that's their new norm. And, and that's changing their whole business model. That's changing the investments that are coming in to that industry. And, and they're panicking. We're seeing their panic manifesting in the pages of the Boston Globe with the Chamber of Commerce launching a, a major publicity campaign to try to, to try to turn the tides of that uh, public sentiment that they know is in opposition to new natural gas and fossil fuel infrastructure. And, and it's not working. You know, so, so we, are, we are winning these campaigns even though we, we lost this one pipeline fight.